Great. Thanks again. We're here with our Nashville Tug virtual number 17. We've been doing this quite a while thanks to the, the pandemic. Glad to see everyone. Uh, recognize some, some names and faces. Just a bit to point out, this session is recorded and will be out uh, available on YouTube publicly. So bear that in mind if you speak up or turn on your camera. You're not anonymous. Uh, if you would remain on mute unless you are speaking. And if you have questions during a presentation, uh, feel free to put those in the chat. We'll review those as time allows after each session. Uh, additionally, if you prefer to remain anonymous, uh, just send me a private chat in Zoom and I will review that and uh, ask the question on your behalf. Let's see, I think that's it. I'm really excited for what we're going over today. Let's skim over the agenda so we know what's up and what's next. You are now experiencing the welcome. Once again, welcome. We'll have Sports Viz Sunday in our community spotlight by Spencer Balke. Then we'll have trivia hosted by Eric Howard, our trivia master. We'll learn to love layout containers. Katie Wagner can do the job, you will see. Uh, we'll then go over Sankey diagrams I find that people either love or hate these. They've either heard of these and are very interested or haven't heard of them and are very interested. Whichever camp you fall into, Sarah Brewington will show you effective ways to uh, produce those in Tableau. Uh, then we'll have some announcements and call it a day. Any questions before we roll right into Spencer's session? in the community spotlight. I'm seeing a chat. Oh, okay. All right, Spencer, it is yours. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry, I was muted. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, uh, my name is Spencer Balke and I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about a Tableau community initiative called Sports Viz Sunday. Uh, I'm a principal consultant at Tessellation and co-founder of Sports Viz Sunday. I've been uh, involved in the Tableau community for a few years now. I think I've published my first Tableau public viz in 2016, so I kind of marked that as my uh, starting off date, uh, but it's really helped me get to where I am, so I'm really um, honored to be uh, included in this lineup today. Uh, my other Sports Viz Sunday mates are Kate Brown and Simon Beaumont. Kate was recently named a Tableau Ambassador, and Simon Beaumont is a Tableau Zen Master Ambassador, and I think everything else under the planet, under the sun. So, quick little icebreaker. What is your favorite sports memory that you've either witnessed on TV or firsthand? And I ask this question because I know a lot of people have memories connected to sports, including myself. And my, one of my favorite sport events that I uh, saw on TV, I was not in person, was the University of Cincinnati, really highly ranked in the country, beating Pitt on a last second play on a snowy day at Heinz Field. And I can just remember the game winning touchdown as time ran out and me jumping up and down, uh, being like, yeah, we finally did it. Well, that is the kind of energy and passion that we try and take from your life and experience and turn that into the same excitement around data visualization and getting your practice in at Tableau or whatever visualization software you use. So what is Sports Viz Sunday? Sports Viz Sunday is an initiative to encourage the creation and sharing of sports themed viz. So it's really, a, it's a community more than anything that relate to each other via sports and data and our passion for it. And in addition, just as a, as a fun side, you get to practice and, and improve your skills at, at Tableau uh, and data viz in general. So just a brief history of how it started. Uh, in 2018, I got together with Simon and James Smith and we decided, hey, we all love sports. We love being involved in the Tableau community. And so we started this initiative and this was our first attempt at a logo. And as you can tell, none of us were really graphic design majors, right? This thing is terrible, but 
we have vastly improved since then. For some reason, they let us present at Tableau Conference 2018. We all joked and thought, hey, if we can get 10 people to show up to this thing, like this is a success. Well, luckily we didn't have a problem getting 10 people in. We actually had a problem uh, with enough space in the room that we were presenting in. So that was pretty sweet. That turned into another invite to Berlin where we all got to present um, at, at Tableau Conference Europe in 2019. And after that, uh, a few months later in Las Vegas, and uh, it was a big hit, filled a conference room. It was really, really fun. So after Vegas, we uh, we had been in, you know, working on this initiative for a couple years now, and we decided, hey, we want to really take this in a uh, in another direction. And so what we settled on is we wanted to get more guest hosts from the community, involve more community members. We wanted to get more advanced data and then collaborate more with people in the community. So that's exactly what we did. Over the past couple of years, we've had some really awesome guest hosts. And if you look on the left-hand side, you'll notice some names that I guarantee you recognize if you're involved in the Tableau community, Zach Geis and Jacob Osufka, uh, Ryan Soares. These are some uh, really, really um, active people in the community and they've uh, guest hosted several months and given us some really awesome data sets. Um, that ties into the more advanced data sets. Uh, we want, we were trying to go for more technical, more granular, uh, more all encompassing data sets uh, that really challenged people in not only their growth uh, in Tableau, but also the analyses that were presented. So, for example, Zach Guys provided us the shot locations of every single shot taken in the NBA since 1997, over 5 million rows of data. The, uh, Things that people built with this data set and contributed to the community were just amazing to see. There were so many different takes and stories um, that, that people found. It was just really cool to see. So we've done similar things like that with Champions League. Uh, if you're familiar with the soccer tournament, uh, player locations and tracking, and then uh, major league pitch locations. We also partnered with Pro Football Focus to get play-by-play -play rushing statistics for the NFL as well. So these are just a few examples of some of the data visualizations that were created just specifically with that NBA shot location data. Again, some really cool stuff. If you go out there um, on Tableau Public, chances are a lot of the shot uh, plots and stuff like that are gonna be made with some of the Sports Biz Sunday data sets. And then finally, that brings us to the more collaboration speech, which was part of our goal. Uh, a couple of years ago, we partnered with Iron Quest when it was first starting out. And actually, that brings us to today. It, our current month's challenge is an iron, another Iron Quest collaboration to visualize your sporting heroes. And that's what we're wanting people to do is go, uh, whoever your hero is, uh, right, in whatever sport you like, uh, visualize it, contribute it to the Iron Quest challenge uh, and tag Sports Fit Sunday in there as well. And that leaves us with, well, okay, you've told us what Sports Viz Sunday is and conceptually, you know, what it's about. Well, how do I get involved? So every single month, we post a monthly data challenge to data.world, and I'll show you the link here in a second, to data.world and to sportsvizsunday.com. We put it out there for people to go take it and visualize. Now, when people uh, visualize it, we ask that you share it on either Twitter or LinkedIn and use the Sports Viz Sunday hashtag because what we do at the end of every week is we go through Twitter and we go through LinkedIn and we search the Sports Viz Sunday hashtag and we um, take all of the things that were contributed to the community using that hashtag or other if we find other stuff and we put them in a weekly roundup blog. So then on Sundays, you can follow me, Kate, or Simon and find the Sports Viz Sunday weekly roundup with a it's a blog with all of the content from that week. Um, you can also volunteer to be a guest host. You can reach out to us either on Twitter or via the website, and you can uh, volunteer to be a guest host and provide your own data set that you're passionate about, and that allows you to get involved, put your name out there, and also uh, help promote Sports Viz Sunday. And then we have a large repository that includes all the data that we've ever used at sportsfitsunday.com. So you can go and you can connect to the data there and play around even if you submit or you don't. So again, this is our data.world site. It's data.world slash sportsfitsunday. You can go and connect to our data 
using the Tableau connector, or you can go to sportsvizsunday.com where you can see our blog data and uh, see more about the people there. We've had a lot of awesome people. And so we just want to say thank you to all the people who have participated and helped make this community what it is. These are just some names. Um, a lot of these people are also Zen masters for Tableau, um, multi-time Tableau ambassadors, just a lot of great creative and uh, super awesome people um, that have helped make this community what it is. So we encourage you to check out our website, uh, follow us on Twitter and get involved. That is Sports Fit Sunday. Nice. Thanks, Spencer. I, I don't see any questions in the chat. So by that respect, you nailed the presentation. Would that, awesome. that be a three-point shot or? Swish. Swish. Nothing but net. There you go. Three-point, nothing but net. There we go. Awesome. Thank well, you. Eric, you have the Kahoot queued up because I think we're ready for that. All right, I just posted the link into the uh, chat if you want to click on that or go to kahoot.it or kahoot it. Let me share my screen. Great. And it's a really good idea for everyone to participate. There is a gift certificate to the winner. Uh, it's it double digits. $50 gift certificate this oh, time? Spoiled it. Yeah, $50. Sweet. With the Tableau store, it. right? I was about to say, I think I know who's going to win if there's only one participant. <laughs> Pretty easy. All right, so our Nashville Tableau quiz for September. Ready, set, go. First one is a poll. You can pick any answer. Which tug breakout room topic would you join? We're gonna do this in a couple months. My favorite Tableau feature, how do you use Tableau? New user Q&A, or how often do you Tableau? So Zoom breakout rooms let you just go out and talk about a specific topic. So we're curious what topics you would be interested in participating in. So you click the answers and uh, we'll make it happen. Probably do this again next month to get with a different set of topics. So. All right. My favorite Tableau feature. That sounds like a winner. So no poll. Are you interested in presenting at a tag Tug meeting. Okay, maybe. Yes, I would love to. No, yet, never, or yes, with some help. So um, we'd love to have each, each Tug have a local presenter. If that's you, we would love to hear from you. And there are a couple of us that would be willing to help if you'd like to do it. You're not sure how. So let's get together and make it happen. <laughs> Right, some on the fence, but that's good. And two, that's our definites, thank you. All right, here comes the quiz. Which came first in products? Tableau prep, Tableau desktop, Tableau server, or Tableau public? One answer, one answer only. The Which faster came the answer, first? The more, the more points you get. Yep. Tableau desktop was the first. All right, next up, oh, we get the scores. Is that Al or AI? We have somebody who's using uh, AI to win this. Which came first, features, spatial joins, buffers, map layers, or data quality warnings? Uh, if you haven't noticed, there's, there's a um, pattern to this quiz, so. Spatial joins, buffers, map layers, or data quality warnings. Which came first? Correct answer was spatial joins. All right, we're getting some separation with this one. <clears throat> AI dropped down and Lindsay took the lead. All right, which came first? These are server items. Explain data, collections, personal space, or Tableau prep conductor. So if you're getting to notice the pattern, 
every question is which came first. There's different topics of which came first. All right, nobody got that one. That was tough. I have to admit that was tough. Tableau prep beat out uh, the other by about a month or two, or a version or two. And it's, well, all right, which came first in features? Set controls, in operators, quick LODs, or viz animations? All right, pretty evenly spread there, but three got it correct. Way to go. Lindsay takes the lead. Not a commanding lead, but definitely a lead. All right, which came first? This is a mixed bag. Tableau Public, Tableau Reader, Tableau Online, or Tableau Mobile? Which came first? I made this early this morning. I still don't remember the answer, so there you go. Tableau Reader came first. All right, Sarah jumps to the lead. Way to go, Sarah. Okay, which came first in connectors? We have Tableau Extensions Gallery, Tableau Notifications in Slack, Secure R Connections and OAuth and Open ID Connections. If you'd like to learn more about connectors, join the Tableau Dev Users Group and you'll get knee deep, hip deep into all of that with uh, Python and R and everything. All right, Sarah's still in the lead. Which came first in the Tableau conference? Virtually anywhere, New Orleans, Las Vegas, or Seattle? You tell from the picture, I'm kind of hopeful that maybe someday they want to come to Nash Vegas and have it. But five correct answers, it was Seattle. They had it at home at first. All right, way to go, people. Sarah won. AI came in second, and Lindsay came in third. Congratulations, and I will stop sharing. Um, Lindsay, no, uh, Sarah, if you would post your email in the chat to um, Jim Diener, you will make sure you get your gift certificate. All right, yeah, Sarah, if you, just, if you just send it to me private, that way I'll, I'll have it and you get your gift certificate tomorrow. Thank you. Congratulations. Good. Well done, everyone. That, that was fun. I think the uh, that last one was a gimme. I was like grabbing for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made some fun. easy, some hard. <laughs> right. Okay, are you ready to learn to love layout containers? We have Katie Wagner with us uh, to show us how it's done. Uh, this can be a pretty tricky topic but I bet she can make it intuitive for us all. We're, we're going to try to love them. I still have my off days. I'll admit that. <laughs> it's hard to love in an abusive relationship. It really is. <laughs> but, but show us. You got it. All right, y'all give me one second to get stuff set up here. Here we go. Fantastic. And I'll keep an eye on the chat. If anyone has any questions, feel free to send those over. So thank y'all so much for having me here at the National Tableau User Group. I believe that there were lots of new names of folks that I haven't met before on the attendee list. So I'm glad to see all of you. Um, I am a data fan member for the past lots and lots of years. Let's say around 2014 is when I really started to get into Tableau. Um, and that conversation came out of, I really want to be in this realm, but I really don't want to do any coding or programming. That was what I would tell everyone that I spoke to. Um, jokes on me, because I still do write calculations in Tableau, but it is definitely much more intuitive. So been a loving member of the data fam for a while now, uh, was extremely fortunate to be a social ambassador for a few years, and loving everything that the community has been able to bring together as we're all living in this pandemic world. 
if we haven't spoken yet, if you haven't uh, met me yet, one of the big things that everyone knows about Katie Wagner is that she's from Louisiana. <laughs> so I am currently in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I am vying for another New Orleans conference when we get back to in-person conferences. So that's always going to be my vote. But I think one of the things that I may have assumed incorrectly about members of the data fam community um, or just people who use Tableau in general was where folks background came from in Tableau. And I say this because I have a business degree. I've never taken a graphic design course. I don't have any formal academic training in anything that has to do with design. And so I see these people, especially Spencer was showing us some of the examples from Sports Biz Sunday, creating these beautiful, unbelievable visualizations. And it can start to give you a little bit of imposter syndrome a bit. So what I'm here to tell you all, my secret, I'm not a designer. I think of the word designer with some extra emphasis. And I like to compare it to the same way that you would think about a home cook versus a chef. I think that there's some training and some formality that comes behind that title of chef, or in my mind, that title of designer. Now, because I'm not a designer, I'm going to use every opportunity that I have to try to level up to try to increase my skills and make things that I'm proud of. And along my Tableau journey, one of the ways that I was able to do this was by finding the structure, finding the organization, finding the patterns, just like you can see, one of my pastimes is cross-stitching. I love it because there is a pattern. And if you follow those guidelines, you end up with a beautiful finished product. So that's how I stumbled upon layout containers. But there were a couple of tricky things, so I'm hoping that I can open up uh, some new ideas for you in using Tableau's layout containers. The first thing that we want to focus on is the fact that we are in the dashboard space in Tableau. So that's the only place that you will see these layout containers because their primary purpose is to help us organize the information that's on our page. So think about things being aligned, think about things being the same size. Those are the kinds of benefits that we might get from using these layout containers. You're gonna be able to find them, just to give you a bit of focus, in the bottom left corner of your dashboard screen, underneath your dashboard objects, you've got these horizontal and vertical layout containers. But hold on, why do I even need a layout container? Tableau is supposed to be easy, right? Why can't I just drag the things to the page? Well, let's take a look at what we stumble across. On this visualization, I have a couple of charts already here. And when I pick up the sheet for age, what I'd like to do is have it share this center space here. One viz, two viz, three viz. That's what I'm hoping for. But when I pick up my age worksheet and I drag it onto the dashboard, I can put it to the left or to the right of division. I can put it to the left or to the right of account, but they don't really share that space very well. And so we wanna think about, well, what is it that we're missing? Tableau is trying to make some assumptions for us whenever we drag these sheets in, and it does a pretty good job. But we need to tell it, hey, this space here, I want them to be equally shared. And so that's where something like a layout container can be really helpful for us. We've got two main types of layout containers. I'll be 100% transparent with y'all. They didn't make a whole bunch of sense when I first looked at them. So hopefully by going through them and seeing some examples, it'll help to click a little bit better. But the big thing that I want you to take away from these containers is that a horizontal layout container is going to allow you 
to control the width of the items that are within that container. And we'll see some examples later, but think about if you need really specific pixel perfect imagery or alignment in your dashboard, you might wanna control how wide that object is. And then as you may have expected, our vertical layout containers are going to help us control how tall an object is. We're gonna be looking at the height of the object within the dashboard. Seeing some chats come up, there we go, okay. Yeah, Jim says we get that backwards. I do too, for some reason my brain just couldn't compute the difference in horizontal and vertical and I don't know why, that seems strange to me. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at what adding in these different containers might help us to do. Remember, we're trying to stack division, account, and age all across that same center portion of the dashboard. The first thing that we know is because we're stacking them left to right, because we're aligning them left to right, we're using a horizontal container. And so you can pick up these containers in the bottom left-hand corner of your dashboard and drag them onto the screen. Looks pretty harmless, right? Just a big empty box. Remember these containers are placeholders for objects to go inside of. One of the things that I do wanna point out about this container is the color of the border that you're seeing around it. So this differentiates a container from other objects. Containers, are going to have a blue border around them. Whereas if I click on something like a worksheet or an image or a text box, those are gonna have a gray border around them instead. So rule of thumb, gray objects go inside of blue containers. And that helps me to keep that alignment in mind. Now, what are the things that you might run into? Because it wasn't all sunshine and roses when I was trying to learn layout containers. I try to bring objects into that container. In this case, I'll try out a text box. And I know I put it in there, but like I can't figure out how to get it into the container, right? I'm not seeing anything that would indicate the container. So tip number one, make sure that the container is big enough. You can always resize it later. But if you're adjusting, in this case, we want our container to stretch across the page. I want to adjust the height. So I'm gonna drag up at the top of this container. I'm gonna make it taller, even just temporarily. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up more space for me to drag an item into the container. The second tip that I'm gonna give you is, man, we can get sort of lost with some of these pieces, right? Lots of containers, lots of layout. Eric pointed out in the chat, the drag and drop item hierarchy in 21.3. I have not tried that out later, but we, I'm sorry, I haven't tried that out yet. We'll talk about it a little bit later. I'm really excited for it, but I'm ready for it to be in desktop. So we'll get, we'll get to that in a minute on how we can use that item hierarchy because I, I love that thing. So we've got our container, but before we start dragging items into it, the second tip that I was given was put in some sort of placeholder. I like to add in a blank just because typically it's easy to get rid of. I don't have to remember, well, why did I put it in there? Was it waiting for some text or an image, et cetera? So I'm gonna pick up a blank object and I'm gonna drag it into this container. And again, I know it's in the container, because of that blue border that pops up. All right, perfect. So we've got our blue item, I'm sorry, we've got our blank object inside of our container. Now we can start stacking things side by side. You might be familiar with this already, but the way that you move objects around in Tableau is by picking up the tab at the top of the object. So I'm gonna pick up division and notice that when I bring division up to the container, 
I can place it to the left of the blank object. I can place it to the right of the blank object. So I'm just going to start by putting it on the left. And then when I pick up a count, one of the key things that shows me I'm actually inside of the container is this blue dashed line that appears. And what that's saying is you're going to put this worksheet that you're moving in between the bar chart and the blank that you've set up. So I'm going to pick up a count and I'm going to place it. Come here. Let me get rid of this other container. I'm going to pick up a count and I'm going to place it to the right of division. And then finally, we have our age sheet that isn't on the dashboard yet. I can pick up age and I can drag it over to the right hand side, seeing that dashed line again between account and the blank placeholder that we put into the container. Now you're looking at this and you're saying, wait, hold on. I thought it was supposed to make them more evenly spaced. This still looks kind of funky. And that's because the blank is just a placeholder. It isn't meant to be there permanently. Once I've put everything that I need into the container, and that does take a little bit of preparation and planning, then I can choose to just get rid of that blank object. And again, it was just making it easier for us to add objects to the container. So I'm going to remove my blank. And they look pretty good. They look pretty spaced out. So Stephen's asking, why do we have to put the blank item in the container? We're going to take a look in the next example of what happens if you don't do that. It's not a requirement, just a, a helpful tip that was shared with me along the way. And we'll take a look at why. So I've got my container and I'm looking at these objects. They look pretty good. They look pretty spaced out, but we can be even more specific. So think about this. If the width of the dashboard is around 1100, doing some quick math, divide that by three, each of them would be about 366 pixels wide. Yeah, I'm not doing that for each one of my dashboards. That's a lot of work. So I wanna tell y'all, I do remember vividly being in the audience for what seemed like just a little tiny feature release that was fantastic. And that's this idea of distribute evenly. I don't wanna do the math. And so if Tableau does it for me, if Tableau can evenly distribute these objects, that's a plus one in my book. So keep in mind, remember blue layout container, that's the border I'm looking for. I can right click on that container or in the upper right corner, I can choose the drop down arrow. And I can select this second option, which is distribute contents evenly. And just to check my notes here, it looks like that came out in 10.3. So it's been around for a bit. You probably have all upgraded um, to that version or a future version by this point. So distribute contents evenly is extremely helpful. I don't have to do the math. Now, the other instance that I first thought about or was taught to use layout containers was to create sort of a title bar up at the top of my dashboard. Think logo, think dashboard title, sort of have everything in one space. So I'm gonna move a couple of pieces around here, move these sheets down. And what I wanna do is up at the top of this dashboard, I'm gonna add in a horizontal layout container that contains my logo and my dashboard title. So a little bit of movie magic, gonna go a little bit quicker here. I pick up my horizontal container. I drag it to the top of the page. I'm gonna put my blank object in. That's just our placeholder for now. I'm gonna pick up an image for my logo. So I'm gonna left click on this image, drag it into the container, place it to the left of the blank. I'm gonna to choose to fit this image and center this image because I know kind of the size that I want it to be. So we can see that by default, it just fills up half of the container. It says, hey, you probably wanna share the space with the blank. At this point, I could pick up a text box 
and I could drag that into my title container. In my specific case, I have a worksheet that has a dynamic date on it that I want to use for the dashboard title. So I'm going to pick up that sheet. I'm going to drag it into my horizontal layout container, but it looks kind of funky. The first thing is that this sheet has a built-in title that comes along with it. So I'm just going to right click on that worksheet and go ahead and hide that title. I just need the content, not the name of the sheet. And then I want to be very specific. So if I'm following some sort of template or guideline from my organization, they may have some rules around how large the logo can be, how much padding it needs around it, what it can be placed next to. And so I know that I want this logo to take up only about 80 pixels of width in this container. And this to me is where we start to get really specific with containers. This is the joy of pixel perfection. Because I can click on that object, I can choose to edit the width, and I can tell Tableau that it needs to be exactly 80 pixels wide. And that's going to be consistent. No matter what dashboard I build, if I have the same dashboard width, I know that this icon will be exactly the same size. Now, I don't need this blank anymore, and I would prefer that the title fills in the rest of the space. But I want to show you something that happens. This little push pin icon that you have on an object, what that's saying is, hey, the setup that I have for this object right now, keep it there. Don't let it move around. So we're going to click on that push pin. And then when I get rid of the blank object, my expectation is that Tableau would expand my title sheet for the rest of the container to fill it out. But when I choose to close that blank, remember, it's like we put a piece of tape on it and we said, nope, it's stuck here. It can't move. So one of the things that you might notice, people will say, oh, you know, editing the width of these containers can be confusing. In this case, my icon is fixed. My icon has a standard width. My title can be flexible. So I want to unpin, I want to remove the width constraint from my dashboard title, and that's going to fill in the remainder of the container. And this might happen sometimes. You might see little um, sideways lines or crosshatched area in your container, some extra space that Tableau's not using. And that's because your objects are pinned in place and they don't think that they have any room to expand. So I'm going to unpin my title and we can see that it nicely fills out the rest of our horizontal container here. So Nick's asking if we know why the software lets us accidentally convert the horizontal container into a vertical. I do know that. The placement of the objects will give you a tiled container, depending on how you put them in together. But I'm not sure, Nick, offhand, why it would um, why it would convert it automatically. So a good thing for us to look into afterwards, definitely. All right, so we've got the main setup of our dashboard. But again, back to that question, why do we need that blank object in the first place? I also want to think about some formatting components that we might have. So I like just a personal design choice of mine to put a separator line in between our title and the remainder of the dashboard information. And there's a few different ways to do this. But one of the ways is by adding a blank object in between our title container and the remainder of the dashboard. To do that, though, I have to be able to stack these items from top to bottom. I need to make sure that I can align them vertically. So here's what I'm going to start off by doing. I'm going to pick up a vertical layout container. I'm going to drag it to the very edge of my dashboard. You can see that it's going all the way along the left-hand side of the entire height of my dashboard. 
And if we think about what that means, I'm going to hop over into the layout pane associated with dashboards because we want to spend a second in what's called that item hierarchy that Eric brought up earlier. We've got this by default tiled container. So again, when you have vertical and horizontal objects together, Tableau says, well, this container is tiled. It's got both types. My gripe with a tiled container is now I can't control the width or the height. So it doesn't necessarily help me out that much. What I need is a container that stretches across the entire dashboard that lets me control the height of all of my stacked objects. I've even been given the advice by Curtis Harris in his uh, famous video that I'll send a link to afterwards. That container can go. When you start building your dashboard, if you go to the item hierarchy first and you wanna get rid of what it creates for you, bye-bye. We don't necessarily need it because we can create our own layout with our own containers. So let's take a look at what happens. I did not put a blank in this vertical container, but I'm gonna start moving objects into it. I wanna pick up my horizontal title, but remember, we don't just want the objects in it, we want the entire container. And a quick way to get to the entire container, rather than having to click on the drop down arrow and choose select container, just double click. If you double click on the tab at the top of an object, it'll choose the container around it. And then if you double click on the container, it'll choose the parent container around it. So it's sort of this um, hierarchical building. <laughs> nice, sorry, Becky, I was just seeing your note about inheriting a tiled layout dashboard. It's creating that item hierarchy. So I'm gonna double click on my horizontal container. You can see the blue border around it. I'm gonna pick up that container and drag it into the vertical. I'm sort of starting over and I'm saying, nope, this vertical is gonna be my main dashboard component. I'm gonna pick up my under construction sign. I'm gonna pick up the container that has division, account, and age. And then I'm gonna pick up the container that has team lead, job title, and years of service. And Stephen, this is the point where I think the blank is pretty handy because I wanna place these three charts underneath division, account, and age. But when I try to do that, it looks a little weird. So first thing I see is that Tableau's trying to put a horizontal container inside of my other horizontal container. That's not what I want. If I try to pick it up and drag it to the very bottom of my vertical container, it fills up what looks like half of the page, but I'm also not seeing that dark blue border. So what this tells me is, I'm not actually putting this into the vertical container at all. If I had a blank there, it would have some space, it would have a gap. And so I could arrange all of the objects in the way that I wanted to. Now, like I said, this is not a requirement to add the blank because here's how I would approach this issue. I'm just gonna put my bottom three charts in the wrong spot. I'm gonna put them above division, account, and age. And then I can rearrange those objects. I can pick up the container for division, account, and age, and I can drag it on top of team lead, job title, and years of service. So like I said, just a little added benefit of having some kind of temporary placeholder in there so that you can align them correctly. But if you forget to put it, which I do most of the time, not a big deal. You can work around that factor. So finally, let's think about that formatting that we were trying to do, right? Having that line across the dashboard. Now that we have our vertical container, I get to choose how tall that separator line can be. So one of the ways to do this, and like I mentioned, there's multiple, but one of the ways to do this is to pick up a blank object, drag it into your vertical layout container, make sure that it stretches all the way across, the vertical layout container. And by default, Tableau is giving me a height of 32 pixels. And I can see this from the layout tab 
on my dashboard screen. That's a bit tall. That would be a very thick, very big border to separate both of them. I personally like to keep those separator lines somewhere between three and five pixels. But if I try to type that in, if I try to edit the height, again, we're doing that from the drop down arrow on the blank object. If I try to edit the height of this object and make it three pixels, Tableau says, nope. Your height must be greater than the total top and bottom margins. What you talking about? What is to total top and bottom? Okay, let's, let's look at this. So in addition to containers, adding a little bit of extra in here, you may have noticed that at the bottom of the layout pane, you have padding. And this is really just Tableau saying, let's give some breathing room. Let's give some space around these components that you're putting on the dashboard. By default, when I drag a blank in, it's gonna have four pixels of padding all the way around the object. And what that means is the very minimum height that I could put in would be nine because it has to have at least eight for the spacing around it. Now containers are unique in the fact that Tableau does not add any padding to them. If you look at a container's outer and inner padding, it's all set to zero. So no big deal. Here's how I'm gonna choose to fix this. In my layout pane, underneath outer padding, I choose the drop down arrow and I set the padding for this blank object to zero all the way around because I don't want that space. I want it to take up the entire width of that vertical container. So I'm gonna choose zero because the padding numbers are equal because they're locked. When I hit zero, everything zeroes out. And now I have the opportunity to click on my object. Because it's in a vertical layout container, I get to choose how tall it is. So I'm gonna edit its height. I'm gonna make it three pixels tall. And then to get that separation, I want to color in the background of this blank object. So on my background, I'm going to pick our color. Let's do a, let's do a quick piece here just because I don't have this uh, custom color saved. I'm going to go into more colors. So again, I'm on my background drop down. I'm going to choose more colors. I have the opportunity to pick a screen color and I want it to match my logo. So I'm hovering my cursor, just like in Paint, if any of you have used Microsoft Paint, hovering my cursor over that logo to pick the correct blue. And when I press OK, you can see that everything is now in the correct theme, it's on brand. So again, just a little recap there, our horizontal layout containers let us control the width, or in these containers, we can ask Tableau to distribute the items evenly so we don't have to do the math. And then our vertical containers are going to let us open up the height of the object. In addition to being able to control the height and the width and exactly how much space something takes up, I also like containers because they give you this sort of separation factor. If you want to think about taking your dashboard and breaking it out into zones or areas, one of the options that's available is to put a border around the container. So this is an, let me back up here. This is a dashboard container that has both the division and the team lead horizontal views in it. And if I choose to put a border around it, you can see that that sort of groups together those six charts as a zone. So visually, my eyes are focused on those six collectively. And I think that's a, a nice enhancement that we can add if you want to put some of that visual focus there. You also have the opportunity, because you could control the height and the width, to put in customized borders. So this, rather than being a container border, it's actually an image that I created in PowerPoint. I chose dotted or dashed lines, but imagine that you have some sort of 
iconography that you want to use. And maybe you've been able to create a separator line with maybe little tiny hearts or little tiny stars, if that's the brand that you're going for. Because I can control exactly how wide they are, I get to say the sheets are going to be X number of pixels wide. The separators are going to be a much smaller width than our actual worksheet. So just a couple of formatting options that we have here. I do want to spend just a minute or two on our item hierarchy. Because this helps us to sort of organize and look at how those objects are placed in their containers. What you can see here is we have a horizontal container that has the division worksheet my line separator, the account worksheet, and so on. So I can see inside of that horizontal container exactly what items are within it. And Eric mentioned earlier that one of the new features, and unfortunately I haven't had the opportunity to upgrade yet to the new version of Tableau, but one of the new features in Tableau, if you're on Tableau Online or Tableau Server, you can actually drag and reorder these objects outside of the container that they live in inside of the item hierarchy. So instead of having to find the tab on a really small sheet and move it around on the dashboard canvas, I can just come directly into the item hierarchy and I can, for example, pick up this navigation button and move it into horizontal container one. So this is a new feature that I'm excited to check out once we're able to upgrade our Tableau server. Hopefully we can do some editing, give me a little less of a headache whenever I'm looking at Tableau server. Last but not least, one of the really exciting features of these containers that Tableau came out with a few launches ago was the fact that we could make these objects collapsible. Real estate is super, super important on our dashboards because our devices are so small that we need to fit a bunch of information in. So being able to collapse that information and expand it on demand is really helpful. Now, we have had some upgrades since then. It's not just containers anymore that can be collapsible. But I'm going to show you how that might be beneficial for the work that you're doing. So on this worksheet, I have a filter associated with uh, this voluntary termination rate where I can choose the termination type. So if I come into my filters, sorry, folks, let me take a look. Let me go ahead and add that as a filter. Okay. okay. There we go. So I've come into my voluntary termination rate sheet. I want to show this termination reason filter on the dashboard. And when I do so, Tableau is going to put it where it thinks it should be. So in this case, you can see we've got two of them here in the view. It's added in this object, but it's sort of placed it on top of everything else. So just be aware, this started out with containers, but now in newer versions of Tableau, you have the opportunity to add a show hide button to your containers. So again, I haven't upgraded yet. If you wanted to, you could go directly to the filter and you could say add show hide button. Or if you're using an older version of Tableau, you can bring in a floating container. So that's the kicker. For previous versions of Tableau, it does have to be a floating, so think a sticker that can be placed anywhere, rather than a tiled container. But if I drag a vertical floating container into my dashboard, if I pick up my filter and I place it inside of my floating container, now I'll see our option when I select that container to add a show hide button. 
So again, this is going to save you some real estate. And for those of you that work in an organization like mine, that's a bit delayed in upgrading Tableau. This is the way that we're going to go about it. You create that floating container, you add the objects inside of it, and then you can choose to show or hide that button. It would look a little bit like this. To move this over would look a little bit like this with the um, X and the little hamburger menu by default. So hopefully you've picked up a couple of tips here. This is my experience with layout containers and how they've helped me to be a bit more organized and they've settled some of the anxiety that I get from this pixel perfection. But there's lots of different ways to organize your dashboard and hopefully this makes it easier for you to share with others um, as we had earlier. So as Becky had mentioned earlier, if somebody's inheriting your dashboard, now you can come in and you can have sort of a structure to it that might be a bit more helpful for them to understand. So question in the chat, can we show how we created the title, the vertical bar, the second line? Yes, um, let me go back to our container here. So, I'm, and I'm, I may be pronouncing it incorrectly, I apologize, Stephen or, or Stefan, is the, is this title container what you're looking for up at the top with the logo? Uh, no, not the logo, where it says people overview, April, 2020. The only time I've ever been able to create a title, I can just put text in it without that formatting, without the second line of text with the smaller font. Yeah, that right there. I got you. Okay, yeah, yeah no problem. Thanks. So this is a worksheet um, and I chose to do this because the April 2020 can be an updating date rather than just a static component inside of a text box in Tableau. And so what I've got here is the dynamic date, if you will, this is a static data set, but let's ignore that. We've got this dynamic date and I've placed it onto the text button of my marks card. And I wanna make sure that the mark type of this sheet is a text mark. So instead of a line or a bar, I wanna make sure that it shows as text. And then at this point, what I can do is click on the text button, click on the little ellipsis so that I open up the actual text box of what's going to be displayed on the page. So I'm choosing text, choosing the little three dots. And now I have the opportunity to insert that dynamic field, but also format different lines separately and sort of make it look exactly like I want it to, all in the space of a single dynamically changing worksheet. That makes sense. Thank, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions that I can answer? Thanks, Kayla. All righty. Well, again, thank you all so much for having me. I hope you picked up some helpful tips. And be sure to reach out online, LinkedIn, or Twitter if anybody has any questions in the future. Great. Well done, Katie. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Thanks, Nick. super informative, thorough. Um, I know lots of us learned lots with that. Are you all ready? We're 66% through the meeting. Got one more presentation for you. Um, Sarah Brewington is a colleague of mine at Nava Health. She's going to walk us through Sankey diagrams just to show you where we're at in our agenda. We're at the 4.30 mark, Central Time. Sarah, are you ready? Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so this is my uh, Tableau user group debut, so bear with me, nerves and all of that. <laughs> all right, so I am going to go through how to build a Sankey diagram. This is something I usually recommend for um, more intermediate to advanced users. I have walked a few beginners through this and it's a little bit overwhelming, but I won't say it's out of reach if you're a beginner. Um, there, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, 
there is a built-in feature that you can use with uh, Tableau extensions, but I, I know at least in my personal experience with privacy concerns, we're not able to use extensions that we haven't built internally. So I've had to find kind of creative hacky ways to build Sankeys internally for work. So I'm gonna go over a couple of things that I've done in the past to do that. Um, so just a quick intro, a Sankey diagram is just a diagram that visualizes proportional flow rate. Um, they date way back all the way to the first um, use of note um, in the 1800s during Napoleon's invasion of Russia. Um, and that is this visualization you see here on my screen. Um, this is kind of a, a really powerful example of how to use a Sankey because it kind of gives you a gut punch uh, reaction to what you're seeing here. Um, so this Sankey is overlaid on a map and it shows flow of troops into Russia during the campaign and then back out. So you can see right away, a lot of people went in, not that many came out. So this did not go well at all. Um, so I really like using this, this diagram as an example of when to use a Sankey because it's a really quick high level to get a complicated high level view um, uh, that you can get across really quickly with one glance without having you know, your user go into too much analytical de detail. Um, so when to use a Sankey, um, pretty much any time you want to show kind of that many to many mapping between categorical dimensions, showing a flow. Um, it's by no means a best practice uh, for any time you want to show this kind of analysis, but um, it's definitely a good, quick, high level, easy to easy to, to eyeball thing when, when you do use it. Um, I will also preface this by saying I'm by no means a Sankey expert. Um, I, I won't pretend to understand all of the complicated calculations that go into, you know, sigmoid curves and keys and all of that stuff. Um, so anyone really can do this if you're able to kind of follow instructions and understand how Tableau works. Um, I mentioned the extension way to build it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through that right now, um, but I will highlight two other options for how to build one yourself without using extensions. Um, the first one is an option that uses no data model, which is great, especially if you have like a really big data set and you don't wanna be, you know, causing any duplication in a really big data set, this one is a good one to use. It's a little bit harder to do because you have to go in and create calculations yourself and deal with um, some nesting table calculation. It's just really, really easy to get wrong, especially if you're not super familiar with um, table calculations. So in this method, you have to come in and update orderings and specific dimensions for each of these nested calculations for it to work. So it's definitely a, a more advanced route for a less advanced visual, visualization. Um, I, I feel like it takes some of the creative control away from you and keeps it really simple like this. Um, so I'm not gonna go step-by-step step through this particular demo, but I, I will include this in my materials at the end. So if you do want to, to go through the calculations yourself, um, the workbook has links for a demo on how to do that. Um, the one that I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step demo on is this monstrosity. Um, it's, it's a lot to look at, but um, there, there's a, a reason for that. I, I wanted to show you all a way to do a multi-tier Sankey so you can see like a full flow without having just, you know, two steps. Um, but the good thing about this method is it's highly customizable. Um, you can choose however many levels you want to show within your Sankey. You can make the levels dynamic. Um, you can make the flow size is dynamic. So right now we're looking at sales. You could change this to see flow of discounts from each of your dimensions. Um, and there's also this handy white space parameter that lets you control how much of the view the Sankey is taking up. I think that really helps highlight, you know, which flows are much bigger than other ones and uh, helps it a little bit, helps, helps it be a little bit easier to digest for end users. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step exactly how I did this. Um, the source of this template is one of the Verlage twins. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. They're kind of rock stars in the Tableau public world. Um, their blog is a really great resource, especially for beginners or people who are just looking for more creative ways to, to visualize their data. These guys are awesome. And what I really like about them is they don't just show what they can do. 
they make all of their Tableau public visualizations downloadable. So you can download it and dig in and see exactly what they did to get to this point. Um, and this article, which is linked in the workbook that I'll, I'll make sure everybody gets, um, has templates for every kind of Sankey visualization you could ever want to build. Um, I picked kind of a middle of the road difficulty one just to, to walk you through some of the more difficult steps without going too deep into detail, but you can get really down into the weeds with these showing traceable um, detail level Sankey flows, but I digress there. Um, you're going to need a couple of things from this website to use this template method. Um, and it's down here at the bottom. All the files is the name of the link. I can't access it on my work computer because of security issues. But um, if you are able to access this, you can download all of the templates that they have available here, along with um, some Excel sheets, um, data models. And that is one of the things that we're going to be using today as well. I'll give you a quick, quick little peek at this. So, this is the data that they were using in their, their Sankey, just kind of dummy data, doesn't really mean anything. And then the model is what we really need from this file. So they've set it up to join their data model to their data just with this dummy link column. There are a couple of different ways you can do that, but I, I, I will get into that. So it does all of the mapping for the complex, I don't know if it's trigonometry, calculus, all of the complex calculations that are needed for this type of visualization for you. So really all you have to know is how to replace field values in Tableau. So I am going to actually downloaded these earlier. This is one of the templates that you will find in the all the files link on their blog. And then I also did a quick export of Tableau Superstore data to use for this demo. And then the model template is that last file there. So your chat position referrals would be an excellent use for this. We've got a similar one at Navajo that kind of monitors progress of patient flow through one of our uh, one of our patient support programs so we can see you know what kind of help have we given to these patients and are they ultimately coming back into a hospital setting or are they you know staying home and happy and healthy like we want them to be so yeah that's a great use for thank you as well It takes forever to load when people are watching me. Sorry. Okay, so this is their template as it comes. Um, you can see kind of that dummy data in the labels here. Um, so the first step you're going to want to do when you're you're taking this template and trying to put your data into it instead of the dummy data is go down to the data source tab. Let me click into that. Since I downloaded this package workbook, it's asking me where the data is. So I'm just going to select that template Excel file that we got from the same location as well. like that you're showing this this from a fresh download because there can be a lot of little gotchas like that. Yeah, I, I practiced this two or three times and it worked much faster <laughs> before, so I apologize. Okay, so I'm gonna click into the migrated data here. And then you can see we're using that Sankey template file, the model joined to the data tabs with that fake link, link field that they created in both of these. Um, you don't have to create a link column in your data when you do this. You can easily join it on one equals one, which is what I'm gonna do 
but that's also an option if you'd rather do it exactly as they do. So to bring in my data and replace theirs with mine, I'm just gonna come over here and add a connection. Mine's an Excel file, but you can do this with SQL data, with anything you wanna do. You just join it to the same, to the model the same way. Um, my super store. This is a step you really would have a hard time with. You had a gigantic data set that isn't filtered much. Um, that That's one of the use cases you would need for one of the more complicated methods of building a sample because this kind of duplicates some of your data and that can take a very long time. This is not a big file and it takes a second anyway. So something to keep in mind. All right, so now I've got my Superstore file here. I am just going to drag in my Superstore data and replace their data with mine. It's going to break that connection because I didn't have that link field, but I'm just going to go down here and join on one. one. So we've got that in and join done. And now we can come back to the dashboard. The join on one, I forget the official name of it. Is that a Cartesian join, Nick? Yeah, or cross join. So you're matching every possible record on one side with every possible record on the other side. You, but you could use the link that the keyword link if you have a link on the other, or like you did the one and one. That's why it's a nightmare with really large data sets as well, because you're pairing every row with every row. So. This is usually much better performing when I'm not sharing my screen and using video. I, I think my Wi-Fi network is to blame for this. <laughs> Don't let that scare you. I think Lindsay asked a question about uh, doing a Cartesian join here. Uh, Lindsay, the reason you're doing this is you're exploding the data set so that each one of these little points, and you can't see me pointing at the screen, but each one of these lines is a series of very short lines and it's creating all those points that need to be joined together. So that's, that's what's happening during this process. And the one equals one just says match every record in one data set with every record in the other set. So if you have 10 records in one set and a thousand in the other set, you end up with 10,000 records. Did I, did I use up enough time, Sarah? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You can see here that everything is broken. Don't let that scare you. It's supposed to be broken. We just took their data out and put ours in, so it doesn't know what it's supposed to be looking at yet. So I'm going to go in, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and unhide all of these sheets. So in this template, they've got um, two, three, four different flows within the Sankey. Um, I'm just going to stick on this one while we do, do the replace work. So you can see how they have it laid out. They've already got all the fields exactly where they need to be. They've got all the calculations set up exactly the way you need it to. What you really have to do at this step is go in and replace their missing fields with your fields. So they had it simply named step one through five in their original data set, which you can see those are all missing now since we replaced their data with ours. And then the the measure that controlled the size of the flows is just named size. So we're gonna replace all of that with what we wanna do. And this is a spot where you can really get creative. You can create a parameter that lets you dynamically choose which each step 
is representing. Um, that takes a little bit more time. I don't know if I have time to actually do that, but I will go ahead and just do a general. Um, so first I'm gonna come in and replace their step one with what I want my step one to be, which is the field segment. So you can see now segment is replacing what was step one on their flow. Step two, I want this to be this reference, I want this to be region. Size. Let's make size. Let's actually make size by one. I'm going to create a parameter. Let's look at sales and did it as the options for flow size. So I've now created this parameter. And now I'm going to create a new field to use for size. So basically what this is doing is saying when when the user has sales selected, I want this flow to be based on sales. When they have discount selected, I want it to be based on discount. That. And then I'm going to replace their size field with our new size field. Let's make this one is the first, first one. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Ours is starting to look more like it should. And the other flows to get them working, same steps that we did before. Just go and replace their steps with the ones that you want. So let's go from region to Let's go from category to subcategory. And you can go, you know, as far as you want. I have done Sankeys that had more levels than this, and I had to go and create all of these different calculations by myself. Don't recommend. It's doable, but. It's a bit much, um, but you can do, you know, as many or as few of these as you like. Um, just, you know, remove what you don't want. And it's, it's very customizable. I really like the white space option. Again, it helps you kind of isolate those bigger flows a little bit easier. Um, and then a step I always do after this is I get the colors on brand with company. <laughs> company colors, but yeah, it's very customizable up to this point. And another good thing about using this template method is that you have tooltips and everything already formatted. So you don't have, you know, sigmoid and T and path bins all laid out within the tooltips that you have to go and edit for each individual sheet. Cause that's, that can be a lot of work. And that's something that you have to do in some of the other methods. Um, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can go in and update the dashboard actions as well. You can see here that, um, these aren't highlighting when I hover, which a lot of people have a problem with. So you can easily fix that by going to actions and just unselecting what you want that cover to, to affect. So a lot of different options here for customizable uh, stinky charts. Um, I hope that made sense. Uh, happy to answer questions. Um, I know stinkies are a lot and I found personally that it's sometimes hard to find an appropriate use case for them, um, but uh, the, the few times I've been able to use them, they've been they've been big hits with users. So, hope hope that was helpful. So, anyone have any questions? I I put one in the chat, Sarah. Oh, sure. Uh, also, want to open the floor for others. 
Um, the number of possible dimensions be too big. You mean the, the number of levels within? Well, I'm level? thinking like almost like a pie chart, right? So like looking at that far right one, mm -hmm. uh, the orange boxes. Like yeah. With this particular template, do you recommend like trying to pick dimensions that only have like five I options or less or 10 options or less or? Yeah, it's kind of dependent on what exactly you're, tra you're trying to do. As a best practice, I try not to do anything that's going to, you know, look like a giant bowl of spaghetti. Um, like, here's what you really shouldn't do. Uh oh. Yeah, that was a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> what are you doing to us? <laughs> <laughs> and then again, people will come in and add color to each individual, you know, dimension, and it, it can get really messy. You want to be careful with these. It's easy to, to build something that you think is really cool, but it ends up, you know, being rainbows and unicorn spaghetti for, for the end user. So I, I urge caution. <laughs> Um, one of the templates that the Fleurlage twins does, I think, is really good when you have big data sets. Um, this traceable one, so you can have a ton of records in here, but you can highlight exactly where one record went through the entire flow. Um, that's one I haven't actually tried to create yet, but I think that would be a really useful one if you've got a data set where you really want to try a Sankey, but you've got, see, you, you don't even want to do it at all because it just takes too long. Um, yeah, caution is is a good a good thing to have in mind when building these. Awesome, this is cool. It made me feel like I could do this. Good. You certainly made it look easy. <laughs> That's after many many frustrating sessions of trying to build one organically. <laughs> All credit to to the amazing collage things. I don't know if I'm <laughs> saying that right. <laughs> um. I'm laughing with the, the amazing in front. It makes them sound like a trapeze act. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they are amazing. And uh, we've had the pleasure of having one of them on uh, That's cool. once or twice before. Any, any other questions before we go on to community? Well done, Sarah. Um, really excited and encouraged for what you showed us today. Let's see. Agenda. All right, we are now ready for the community spotlight. This is where we'll go over uh, announcements for the larger community. This is largely led by Jim Daner. Uh, Jim, you know, I, I downloaded the PowerPoint, but I've been juggling. Throw it away? I did. <laughs> no, I just didn't open it yet. It's it's in my inbox. Um, okay. Do you have it handy or do you want me to scramble? I'll, real quick? I'll go find it. Okay, well, let's and race. in the meantime, Sarah, that was outstanding. I want to, I, I want to tell you that is not easy to do and you made it understandable. Thank you. So great job. Agreed. I can send a link in chat. I actually, I uploaded my workbook to uh, Tableau Public if anyone wants to download it and dig in. I, I think that. I've got it in my clipboard. But pop that in there. I've got it there. You I'm got it, Jim? Sharing. Yeah, I got it. I'm going to, I'm going to start sharing right, uh, right about now. Oh. Okay. Can, can you all see that now? Yes. Okay, very, very good. I want to go over several announcements that center around the next month and a half, and that's and that all leads up uh, to the conference, the 9th through the 11th in the U.S., and it's a little bit longer on the tail end of that uh, outside the U.S. So if you, if you see people talking about the 9th through 12th, the 12th is outside the U.S., but if you haven't signed up already, here's, here's the link. That's where you go to sign up. Please sign up. Uh, rumor has it that one of our very own is going to be speaking at the conference. Eric is going to speak at the conference. Eric, do you want to just kind of tell them what you're going to speak about? Oh, it's a uh, conversations about data governance. So um, we had technical issues during the recording. So I'm going to be reserved about until seeing my name on the uh, list before I publish it on LinkedIn or anything. But yeah, 
Um, we'll let us know. It'll be good. Okay. Well, once again, the conference is free. Okay. Usually, if the, I, you do these things in person, it's like a thousand dollar fee to go to the go to the conference. Conference is free. You're going to get to see great speakers. By all means, sign up for it. For those of you who are, are familiar with brain dates, there's going to be two sessions of brain dates. There's going to be a session before the conference, October 12th through October 14th. There are going to be brain dates. And we just had a meeting on this the other day. Uh, I'm going to be doing some brain dates. If you want to come out and sign up with me, uh, I'm doing brain dates on any type of calculation. But go out to this link. You can sign up to do a brain date, or you can sign up with somebody else to attend a brain date and it's either a one-on-one -on -one session or there are group brain dates so take advantage of that because you get to you get to meet some you know pretty impressive people i think ken and kevin uh, uh, ken and kevin flerlage are, are going to be doing them uh, i know i will be doing them there will also be brain dates inside the conference now uh starting in january there's going to be a brand new users group and it's for newbies and uh uh, Klaus, uh, somebody's got a mic open. That's all right. You can you can go to the conference too. No, you can. Uh, Klaus uh, Klaus Schultes in Germany and I uh, we are co leaders for a new users group. It's dedicated to newbies. And when we're talking about newbies, if you're past that getting started point and you want to expand your um, your skills, or you just want to meet with other people who are at the same level, it's a group. For you, you can sign up and enroll in that group right now. And here's the link where you can go out and you can sign up for that group. We'll make sure that you're all included on uh, all the communication. And also, if you have an idea of topics that you want us to cover, if you, you know, something's important to you, or you want to hear certain uh, certain speakers, let us know, and uh, we'll see what we can do about making that happen. But the first meeting is going to be in January. There's going to be more about this in the coming months, and you're going to see it at uh, see it at conference also. Now, this one's kind of a personal thing. If there's any K through 12 teachers out there who are using Tableau or would like to use Tableau either in the classroom or with an analytics club or maybe in competition, uh, please contact me. Uh, I've got something going on that and I'd like to, I'd like to find uh, one or more uh, K through 12 teachers to work with. Uh, and that's my uh, email address. Just put in the subject line, uh, you know, K through 12 teacher so that uh, uh, so that I know uh, I know what the topic's about. Job seekers are still opportunities at uh, uh, at Tableau and JLL is still looking. And one of our own, Brandon, why don't you tell us about what you've got going here? Yeah, well, just in the chat too. It looks like there are several several openings in the chat. But um, our role, we we just uh, we are looking for a junior analyst. Uh, Sankey diagrams not required, so. Um, if you don't, can't build that, do not worry. Um, yeah, if you've got any experience with Tableau, we have uh, openings on our team. We got lots of cool stuff happening. We are implementing Tableau at LP. So big transition project ongoing, lots of opportunity in Power BI, Tableau, Alteryx, the whole nine. So lots of, lots of room for growth over here. Uh, Eric, you have something that uh, you want to you wanna talk about? You're muted, Eric. Okay. You're still muted, about... Eric. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure what Eric's saying is fantastic, <laughs> phenomenal, and everyone should sign up to work with him. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm muted. Sorry. But yeah, our business analyst is open. It took six months, but uh, it's finally there. Uh, look for Section of Surgical Sciences on the Vanderbilt website. Or email me. I put my email in the in the uh, chat. Okay, and Nick, you've got something, or maybe we should let let Sarah talk about it. Yeah, she might draw more attention. Yeah. <laughs> they're tired of hearing from me. <laughs> now, just in the chat, I put um, a search link. We have three analytics engineers uh, positions open, and that's working with Tableau and SQL Server, as well as stakeholders and solving cool problems like okay. using sand key diagrams too on occasion as it, if it calls for it. Okay, John Wilson, you've got something. 
Yeah, thank you. I um, uh, work in analytics at Brookdale Senior Living, and uh, we have a manager role open right now uh, that works pretty pretty closely with the Tableau group, but also a, a potentially an analyst uh, opening that'll that's not posted yet. But uh, uh, are those here in Nashville? In that or in the local one? remote. Okay. So yeah, based in Nashville, okay. but work from home. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Let's just talk real briefly about uh, next month. He said confidently. Okay, next month, the meeting's October 27th. It's a 3.30 meeting. Now, understand there's not going to be a meeting in November. Okay, so we're going to have this meeting in October. We're also going to have a meeting in December, and I think Nick's going to talk about that in just a second. But uh, we're going to have three speakers, uh, the community moment. We're going to have uh, Quan Clark from Pivot Technology talk to us about what they're doing here in Nashville. We're also going to have a segment on speed tipping by Jeffrey Schaefer. And if if you don't know Jeff Jeff Schaefer, he is, I made the comment, he was a Zen master when they were Zen babies. He is, he's one of the, the very old school, uh, real knowledgeable Tableau people. So it's a real honor to have him here. And then we're going to have a tech segment on uh, Tab Pie sc uh, Scraper. And Brandon, do you want to just say something about that and who's going to be making that presentation? So it'll be likely either uh, somebody from my team or just me myself. But we are, we've are we been working on some stuff uh, internally at LP uh, to build sentiment analysis uh, using Tab Pie. So um, that thing, that's it's still in a state of development for us, but we'll we'll sort of get everybody where we're at. Well, Nick, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Did you want to just uh, explain what's going to happen in December? No, you have to, uh, have to you, unmute. There unmute. you go. You have to unmute. <laughs> December will be a semi-social event. You know, it's towards the end of the year. Everybody will be doing lots of fun and different things, family, loved ones, and such. Um, so hopefully we're on your list of loved ones. And we will have a breakout session in the round. We've, we've done this a couple of times before, and it was just really satisfying. It was just enjoyable. It, I feel like it's the virtual equivalent of mingling, you know, talking to people about how you use Tableau and, and really just kind of being around the water cooler with fellow analysts or uh, whatever you call yourselves, because every title is a little different, right? Uh, it's really good. I would encourage you to attend, and there'll be more to come on our uh, newsletter. I don't even know what to call it. The standing emails that you should be receiving, hopefully. Okay. Invitations. Yep. Yes, invitations. Thank Anyone you. Anyone that he wants to study for the October quiz, I plan on doing it on colors. Colors with Tableau. We'll see how that goes. But it's, it's fall, so there's a theme there. Okay. Katie, Sarah. You guys were great today. Thank you so much, Spencer. You were you were outstanding. Also, something near and dear to my heart is sports. But um, Katie and Sarah, great presentations today. Really, really thank you for doing that. We appreciate it.